welcome you all to another discussion for this subject construction materials and testing uh, we are already on our second week now and this will be our lesson one you now for the week so and lesson two will be tackled or will be discussed friday now. okay so for this um, discussion we are going to talk about the general properties of materials okay so previously we have discussed that diba, um, um, before mag start and even during no, the construction phase, we really have to conduct um, testing or quality test on those materials that we incorporate into the work. Okay. Now the question there is, um, how do we test those materials? Okay. So basically, testing of those materials is, um, is like looking into their uh, into their respective properties or basically evaluating you know, the respective properties of that certain material. So there are different you no know, set of properties um, per certain material. You no. Know? So for this um, discussion, we are going to talk about what are these properties you no know, of these materials put. So first, we talk about there are um, types no, and properties of different construction materials. So we have uh, for this discussion, no, we are going to talk about the properties of timber, sand, concrete, steel, no, and some others. So first, we talk about timber. Okay, so the wood suitable for construction of buildings or for other engineering purposes is called timber. So it is used for structural framing. Uh, as a mga rough carpentry, no, which includes trims, um, floors, walls, and cabinetry, and um, mga finishes, na finished carpentry and architectural woodwork also. So, um, relative to its weight, wood has high strength in compression, tension, and bending. It also has excellent impact on resistance. So when you say um, timber, no, o pwede sa, uh, pwede po na to siya tawagun as wood. So na mga hard woods and na mga soft woods. So na din you know what are those examples of hard woods and soft woods. So when a wood is cut into pieces of specific thickness, width, and length, it can now be called as lumber. Okay. So, lumber products include rough framing members, at least 2 inches thick, such as beams, headers, and posts. Finished lumber, such as flooring, door and window trim, paneling, and moldings. And specialty items, such as decorative panels, carved doors, ornamental overlay designs, and turned balusters. Now, lumber is classified as rough sun or surface to size. So rough sun lumber has been cut to size but not dressed or surfaced. So surfaced lumber has been dressed or finished to size by running it through a planer. So the designation S2S is used for lumber dressed on two sides and S4S for lumber that is surfaced or planed on all four sides. Okay, now still under the classification of timber, supply wood is a wood product made of several layers of lumber arranged with the grain at right angles in each successive layer and bonded with an adhesive. So the odd number of layers is used so that the grain of the face and the back are running in the same direction. So the panels are usually 4, to, uh, four by 8 um, feet no, in size and are available in finished thickness ranging from 1 8 inches to a uh, 1 8 inch rather to over 1 inch so basically um commercial size same hong plywood is um 4 by 8 feet no or kung ima na siyang i-convert into meters ano na siya 1.2 by 2.4 meters okay and then gavari na siya sa ihang thickness po and syempre kung lailahi ang thickness lailahi po ang ihang price Okay, so because of its modular size and uniformity, plywood speeds construction and is considered an economical building material. Interior plywood is bonded with an adhesive that is water resistant. So it is used for cabinetry, rough flooring, and finished walls. Exterior or structural plywood is bonded with a waterproof adhesive. So it is used for wall uh, sheathing, finished walls, roof sheathing, and concrete forms. So we also have glue laminated timber. 
The process of laminating, or shall we say, bonding layers of lumber together with adhesive, has made it possible to span larger distances and change traditional construction techniques. So wood beams, arches, and other members of nearly any size and shape cannot be fabricated. These laminated products are made of keen dry lumber and prepared for interior and uh, both interior and exterior use. So these beams are usually pre-finished at the factory and to the job with um, protective wrapping. So timber can be used no, or can be utilized in different ways. Okay, so timber can be used as posts beams, lintels, doors, and windows, and at the same time, it can also be used um, in floorings, roofing, ceilings, and the like. No? And at the same time, timber can also be used in rafters, purlins, trusses, and the like. No? Kanang mga roof framing ni mo. And also, timber can be used for interior decoration purposes, and at the same time, it can be used in uh, making furniture, sport goods, railway sleepers, and etc. Okay. okay, so the quality of timber must be ensured before using it for a purpose. So the quality can be ensured by investigating these properties of timber. Okay, so here are the properties now that you need to um, look closely into now as you evaluate the quality of that specific timber. Okay, so first is the color. So the color should be uniform. And just one tip, no light color indicates weak timber. Okay. Second property is the odor. So um, the odor should be pleasant no, when the timber is cut freshly. freshly rather. Okay. Next property is the soundness. So a clear ringing sound when struck indicates the timber is good. Okay. Next property is the grains no, of the timber. So in good timbers, grains are close. So dikit dikit siya no. Next property is, of course, the density. So, timber having higher density have a um, thicker wall and is considered stronger. Okay. Next property is the hardness. So, harder timbers are strong and durable. Next is the warping property. So, good timber do not warp under changing of environmental conditions. So, next property is the toughness. So, timber should be capable of resisting shock loads. So next property is its resistance to abrasion. So good timber do not deteriorate due to wear. This property should be looked into if the timber is to be used for flooring specifically. Okay. So syempre gamitin mo siya sa sa lug, no? And then hindi ang mga abrasion against labi na uh, prone siya sa exposure sa kanang pagbagid bagid no sa sapatos or mga ligid no. Um sa pabaka ng mga friction ya against sa kanang mga furniture no mga tiil sa furniture no so mana siya so next property is of course no the strength of your timber so timber should have high strength in um, bending shear and direct compression so next property that we should um, evaluate no when um, using timber is its modulus of elasticity so timber with higher modulus of elasticity are most preferred in construction Okay. Next property is the specific gravity. Um, so basically, kaning specific of gra specific gravity no one of the important properties na siya, no and kaning um, top priority na siya, no when you say um, evaluating the properties of um, timber. Okay, so specific gravity. So variation of timber, um, specific gravity uh, is in the range of 0 0.3 to 0 0.9 is found. So it, it depends on pores present inside the timber. So the specific gravity of this light material is less than that of water. So less than one siya no ang specific gravity. But in case of compact wood where um, pores are almost absent and um, it becomes heavier, their specific gravity increases up to 1.5. So next um, construction material is the sand. Uh, so now we talk about the different properties no, uh, of sand. Okay. So sand is, is a granular material composed of finely divided rock and mineral particles. It is defined by size, being finer than gravel and coarser than silk. 
Okay, so the composition of sand varies depending on the local rock sources and conditions. But the most common constituent of sand is inland continental settings and non-tropical coastal settings is silica or silicon dioxide or manayangkon, usually in the form of quartz. Okay, sand, uh, sand rather, is a non-renewable resource over human time scales and sand suitable for making concrete is in high demand. So here are some of uses and importance of sand. Okay, so sand is in uh, a very commonly used in common in construction. So often providing bulk, strength, and stability to other materials such as asphalt, concrete, uh, mortar, render cement, and screed. Okay. Sand is also used as a base layer known as blinding that is laid above a layer of hard core to provide a clean level and dry surface for construction works. Okay, it can also be used in its raw form as a decorative material in landscaping. Another use as an importance of sand, the sand is used um, in liquid form to manufacture a glass rather and is also used for molding metal casting. And also sandpaper is also made up uh, is made up of sand of course. No? So um so if you classify sand, daghan pede pamaagi, no. So um, sand can be classified as per their particle size. Okay. So when you say um, um, sand, na siya ilahay ilahay ng particle size, no. And then na siya itulo ka klase. So um, na di ang fine sands, medium sands, and coarse sands. So um, if you say fine sand, so ang yahang particle size ana nagarange sa 0.06 to 0.2 millimeters. Okay. And usually fine sand is mainly used for plastering, no. Kana sa mga mga masonry structures. Okay, and now second type or classification of sand is the medium sands, uh, wherein ang yahang particle size is nagarange from 0.2 to 0.6 millimeters. And medium sands is generally used for masonry work. No, kanang sa kanang sa mortar, no, kanang ginabatang siya in between sa kanang paglay ni mo sa mong CHB. Okay. So next type of sand is the coarse sands, where in a young particle size is range from 0.6 to 2 millimeters. No. So and then your coarse sand is usually or generally used for concrete work. Kaniyang ginasagol ni mo si Mohang, um, concrete. Okay. No. Now another way of classifying sands, no, is through its particular sh uh, particle shape, rather. No. So pwede ni mo classify ang sand as um angular subangular, rounded, flat, and elongated. Okay? And then, uh, pwede po nyo i-classify yung sand as per its texture. No? So, sands can be rough or smooth or polished. Okay? And also, nagya po ay ka ng composite material made up of sand. No? So, na composite soil types um, ang iyang base ay na is sand. No? Pwede giha po nyo siya classify as sandy gravel or gravelly sand. So basically, that is a combination of both gravel and sand. No? And then, apo diha ang clay composite, no? which is a combination of both sands and clay, and are described as plastic or cohesive siya by nature. No? And nada po diha ang silty composites, which is composed of um, your sand plus silts, no? and is described as non-plastic or kanasyang low in plasticity. Okay. Um, your sand no can also be classified as per its structure no so your sand can either be homogeneous interstratified heterogeneous or weathered now um what is ang pwede ni mo, th those are different um, ways no in classify uh, classifying your sand. Now na another way in classifying your sand no. So ang imong sand pwede siya classify based sa yahang source. Okay? So first um classification of sand based on its source is the river sand. So this sand is obtained from large rivers. It is usually fine in size. So proper care should be taken uh, taken while taking the sand from rivers so that there is no clay mixed with the sand. Okay, so usually kana makita ninyo no kana may mga constructions along the river banks usually ang ginagamit nilang source for sand is kana nagyong river 
wherein kanang ihang kanilang project site kibalin no kay ang equipment nila nga gamiton ano is ano naman kana excavator and then dump truck then makasave pa na sila in terms sa cost pod ug sa kanang uh, mobilization or kanang delivery cost Okay, so muna niya makita usually uh, kanang na yung mga bako o dump truck mga gabalik-balik along the river bank. Uh, usually, gahaul na sila og sand. No? And kanang yung kanang ginahaul nila nga sand is muna silang ginatawag na river sand. Okay. So next, classification of sand based on the source or uh, based on its source is the pit sand. So this is obtained from old stream beds where it is sharply and generally coarse or kanang mga Kaya ang mga quarry, no? So, ang tawag ana, nga sand, ang tawag sa sand, gikan di ana is the pit sand. Okay? Next is the sea sand. Okay? So, this sand is obtained from beaches, of course. So, it is usually good for most of the works if they are free from detrimental salts, except reinforced concrete works. So, these types of sands are avoided to use in many constructions if necessary. Um, it should be washed in fresh water and then, uh, that's the time na okay siya gamiton. So here are the properties of sand, no? So many mga properties that we look closely into as we do evaluation on its quality. Okay. So first is the grain should be sharp, angular, and coarse. Second, the sand should be free from clay material and of course organic matters. Okay. The sand or the grains of the sand should be, um, of course, be of durable minerals. Next, um, it should be free from salts, no? especially those um, sand nga gikan sa nakatong type sa sand nga sea sand no katong base ayang source okay and also the gradation of grain sizes should be such that um it will give minimum voids next um it should be clean and free from coatings of clay and silt next uh, your sand should not contain any organic matter so balik na siya no and also your sand should um um uh um, chemically safe, no, in terms of yung chemical composition. So, uh, usually, yung sand is ga undergo yung po siya chemical test. Anyway, so sand is, uh, sand is loose particles of hard, broken rock, and it comprises of grains from disintegrated rock. So next, um, construction material, no, wherein ang yung properties or ang yung quality test is based yung properties is ang gravel. Okay, so um, what we have discussed already is the timber and the sand, no. Now we talk about gravel. Okay, so gravel is a loose aggregation of rock fragments. Gravel is classified by particle size range and includes size classes from granule to boulder sized fragments. So ang um, gravel, no, pwede ni mo siya i classify based sa yahang particle size no same sa sand so na diha ang fine medium and coarse gravel no so when you say um fine gravel so ang yahang range ana is 2 mm to 6.3 mm ang yahang particle size no and when you say medium gra uh, medium gravel ang yahang particle size ana is naga range from 6.3 mm to 20 mm and when you say coarse gravel ang yahang particle size ana naga range from 20 mm to 63 millimeters. So usually or typically no one cubic meter of gravel um it weighs about one thousand kilogram uh, one thousand eight hundred kilogram. No mana yahang um typical niyang uh, unit weight. So here are some of the uses and importance of gravel. Okay, so gravel along with sand is used for the manufacture of concrete of course no as well as for mixing with asphalt as part of road construction. And also gravel can be used as the base layer for roads before being covered with tarmac and also um, commonly used to surface roadways, especially those in rural areas and in icy condition. Gravel can also be used along with pebbles as a form of render known as pebble dust, which is used for the external walls of a building in which the top coat is textured to create um, a rough finish. So, pwede gihapon gamito ni mo ang gravel, no? Uh, di has yung mga architectural finishes. And also, gravel can be used in the filtration of water, where it acts as a natural filter, holding back um, precipitates, which may contain impurities, as well as other sand particles. Okay, pwede siya gamitin as filter na alongside with sand. And also, gravel is commonly used for landscaping applications, such as on the driveways, walkways, or as a decorative filler over soil instead of grass.
<clears throat> Pwede ka pa siya sa landscaping gihapon, no? Ang gravel. So, here are the properties of gravel now that we should look closely into as we evaluate its um, um, quality. No? So, first, um, gravel should be hard, strong, and durable, of course. No? And then, gravel should also be dense, clear, and free from any coating. So, it should, be, it should also be free from injurious vegetable matters, and it should not contain flaky or angular and elongated pieces. And also, your gravel should not contain any material liable to attack steel reinforcement in case of reinforced concrete. Okay. Next property is we have the reinforcing steel bars or our rebars. Okay. So rebar is also known as reinforcement steel and reinforcing steel. Na. Um, it is a steel bar or mesh of steel wires used in reinforced concrete and masonry structures to strengthen and hold the concrete in tension. Okay, abalutan na lang uh, um, We use reinforcing steel bars for tension, na to combat tension forces <coughs> or tensile forces. Okay, so um, to improve the quality of the bond with the concrete, the surface of the rebar is often patterned. So here are some of the uses and importance of rebars. Okay, um, your, uh, your, your reinforcing steel bar can be used as um, primary reinforcement. So it is used to provide resistance to support design loads. And then it can also be used as secondary reinforcement. It is used for durability and aesthetic purposes by providing localized resistance to limit cracking and temperature induced stresses. Okay. And also, your rebars provide resistance to concentrated loads, spreading it through a wider area. And also, your rebar assists other steel bars in accommodating their loads by holding them in the correct position. And also, your exter uh, external steel tie bars to constrain and reinforce masonry structures, sometimes as a means of building conservation. Next, uh, it can also be used as, uh, among rebars now can also be used in um, reinforced masonry, wherein some masonry blocks and bricks include voids to accommodate rebar to carry tensile loads. And usually, kana kita po sa mga uh, masonry walls, no? usually ang yang, ano, ano, yang, um, distance uh, from each other is 0.6. No? Di ba, kamantay mga nangan na ni mga uh, bangag-bangag ang uh, ato ang um, hollow block na no? usually tulon na siya kabuok. So, diha, usually. Uh, uh, ang provision for our um, steel bars na alongside with um, provision for mortar. Okay? <clears throat> and also, the rebar is secured in place um, using grout. So, here are the properties of rebar. So, now first is, of course, no, uh, we do evaluate the stencil strength of our rebar. So the ultimate strength of the bar is at least 10 to 15% more than the yield strength of the bar. So usually ang uh, makita ni sa iyang <coughs> manufacturing uh, mga detail, details no, ang iyang ultimate strength and also ang iyang yield strength. So if you have to look into that, ang iyang ultimate strength should at least uh, be um, 10 to 15% more than the yield strength of the specific bar. Okay. Next property is, of course, the bond strength. So, bonds in concrete and steel depends on the deformation of the ribbing patterns um, over the bar. So, the slipping characteristics of deformed bars are, um, zero, are at, at 0 0.1 millimeters. So, the longitudinal ribs over the bar um, is to increase the bond strength at about 3 to 4 times of the plain bars. Okay. So, next property is, of course, no, the, ducti the ductility. Next is the weldability, the co uh, corrosion resistance, and of course the fire resistance. Okay, so when you say na yung mga um, different uh, different types of reinforcing steel bars, now first we have the mild steel bars. The surface of the mild rather mild steel bars are plain and round in shape. They are available in various sizes of six millimeters to fifty. Millimeters. They are used in concrete for special purposes such as dowels at expansion joints where bars must slide in um, a metal or pipe sleeve, a paper sleeve or for construction a contraction joints in roadways and runways and for column spirals. They are easy to cut and bend without damage. So usually, ang kaning mild steel bars, um, yung usage ani, makita niyo mo usually is kanang sa mga a road, a roadway 
construction no kung kanang butang na to construction joints or construction joint or expansion joints ang ginagamit na to ana is mild steel bars kay bali wala na siya yung mga ribbings or corrugations no uh, sa iyang body ano plain lang na siya naka design na siya because uh, uh, para mag slide slide lang man good ang duha ka gisumpay na to nga ana niya duha component no for ano na siya for um load transfer okay Next is we have the deformed steel bar. So deformed steel bars have ribs, lugs, and indentation on the surface of the bar, which reduces the major problem that is faced by mild steel bar. Due to slippage and good bonding is achieved between the concrete and rebar. So the tensile properties is higher compared to other rebars. These um, bars are produced in sections of um, same area as a mild steel bar, no? 6 mm to 50 mm in diameter. Okay, so now uh, if you say deformed steel bar, so now should do a no? The thermo uh, mechanically treated bars or the high strength deformed bar. Okay, the thermo mechanically test, uh, treated bars are hot treated bars that are high in strength used in reinforced concrete or RCC work. It is the latest induction in DMS steel bars with superior properties such as strength, ductility, welding ability bending ability and highest quality standards at international data. Whereas ang high strength deformed bars are um, cold twisted steel bars with lugs, ribs, projection or deformation on the surface. It is extensively and majorly used for reinforcement um, purposes in a construction. So these bars are produced in sizes or sections from four millimeters to 50 millimeters in diameter. Okay. So, there are other types of rebars. Now, depending upon the type of material used in the production of rebar, different types of rebars are uh, nadi ang re European re uh, rebar. So, European rebar is made of manganese, which makes them bend easily. So, they're not suitable for use in areas that are prone to extreme weather conditions or geological effects such as um, earthquakes, hurricanes, or tornadoes. The cost of this rebar is low. No, of course, kaya gamay raman siya o capacity. Okay. Next is, we have the carbon steel rebar. So, as, as the name represents, it is made up of carbon steel and is commonly known as black bar due to the carbon color. So, the main drawback of this rebar is that it corrodes, uh, which adversely affect the concrete and structure. So, the tensile strength ratio coupled with the volume makes black rebar one of the best choices. Okay. Ang yaha lang yung drawback or yung disadvantage is that uh, dali siya mag-corrode, no? yung corrosion capability. Okay. Next um, type of rebar is we have the epoxy coated rebar. So uh, epoxy coated rebar is black rebar with an epoxy coat. Okay. So it has the same tensile strength but is 70 to 1,700 times more resistant to corrosion. However, the epoxy coating is incredibly delicate. So the greater the damage to the coating, the less resistant to corrosion. Next type of rebar is the galvanized rebar. So galvanized rebar is only 40 times more resistant to corrosion than black bar. But it is more difficult to damage the coating of the galvanized rebar. In that respect, it has more value than epoxy coated rebar. So, however, it is about 40% more expensive than epoxy coated rebar. Okay, syempre, mas mahal gud siya no kay mas tako man siya in terms of capacity niya hang resistant to corrosion. Okay? <clears throat> Next type of rebar is we have the glass fiber reinforced polymer. So, the GFRP is made up of carbon fiber. As it is made up of fiber, bending is not allowed. So, it is very resistant to corrosion and is costly when compared to other rebars. Next is we have the stainless steel rebar. So, stainless steel rebar is the most expensive reinforcing bar available, about 8 times the price of the epoxy coated rebar. It is more resistant to damage than any of the other corrosive resistant or corrosive proof types of rebar, and it can be bent in the field. Okay, so if you check also on those rebars ka kanang untouched siya, no? Usually ka nang, ano siya, 6 meters, good siya. Yung if, if you check on those ends of those rebars, no? Yung mga patanda freshly delivered from the manufacturer, na lang mga markings ang uh, yung mga rebars, usually sa end na niya, no? Or if not, nasa tunga. 
na na siya mga markings. Ano ni siya example sa iyang markings, no? Kani sila, no? So unsa ibot pa sa buot ang mga markings nga makita nimo? Okay, ang kanang letter diha, kaning dere kani is uh um corresponds to its points of origin. So basically, ang nana diha is the letters or symbols of the producing mill or ang kanang yung manufacturer. Okay? So ubos ana niya is kaning two digit nga na uh, number, no? Usually it uh, denotes the sign size no of your rebar no in terms of diameter na siya so makita ni mga diameter sa mga rebar na dapat na siya ang mga so yung marking no and then ubos ni ana niya is makita ni mo kung unsa siya nga type sa steel no na siya ay designation kung unsa siya nga type og kana pud ang iyang letter no nga naka-assign siya so if you would be able to see s so that would mean carbon steel siya no and then kung w side pod uh, it means that your reinforcing steel bar is ang uh, yang type niya is low, uh, low alloy steel siya and then kung double s siya or duha ka letter s na that means um stainless steel yung mga rebar and then kung r siya rail steel and then so on okay and then ang uban ni ana diha ang ubos ni ana niya rather is ang kanang yang minimum yield designation or ang yang grade mark or grade line Okay, so usually, pag nakabotang diha 60, is bot pa sa bot grade 60 ang imuhang, ang imuhang reinforcing steel bars, ang yahang, ano na siya, uh, yahang minimum yield strength, no, grade 60 siya, kung 75, which means grade 70 siya, no, and so on. Okay. Now we talk about the types and properties of concrete. Now, concrete is the oldest building materials having been used by the Romans as early as 100 BC. So, concrete is a mixture of cement, sand, gravel, and mixtures, and water. So, composite materials yan, no? So, when first mixed, it is plastic. It is able to flow and be shaped and can be cast to the shape of the formwork provided. Hardening of concrete is caused by a chemical reaction between the cement and water called hydration. And also, uh, we have also discussed previously, no, nga what defines the strength of our concrete is through its cement, uh, water cement ratio. So basically, ano na siya, proportion na siya sa imuhang water and cement. Okay. So here are some of the uses and importance of concrete. It, um, concrete is an, imo, uh, is an important building product. Concrete is chosen over wood as, as a construction material, no, uh, especially sa kanang mga um, buildings nga to ang siyang design to um, to exist in a very long time, no. And also, concrete is durable and cost effective. Okay, and also, concrete is a sustainable choice for residential and commercial projects. And also, the strength of concrete increases over time, no? So, usually, ang kanang, when you say time, um, kanang, the, from the very beginning, no, kanang, mixing sa concrete mixture, then ibuhos siya sa, dito sa formworks, no? Uh, it could either be hollow, beams, or slab. So, usually, ang kanang fast nga um, increase, no, sa strength sa concrete is within 7, 14, and 28 days, no? And then, naman na siya graph, no uh, sa strength og sa days pod nga ma-attain niya no so usually makita ni mo ang kanang from um 17 uh, sab, uh, sorry 7 days to 28 days so diha gyud ang paspas ang magpag-attain sa imong strength sa imong concrete no so manay ang bupa sa bot diha that the strength of your concrete increases over time pero uh, the, the, the longer no biyan sa kanang 28 days mag-increase magud gihapon ang strength sa imong concrete pero gamay na lang yang increment okay now, um, concrete can hold up against weather condition and of course, it is easy to maintain. Um, it is used as aggregates in road beds or as um, granular material while making uh, new concrete. Concrete is also fire resistant and can be shaped in various forms and has multiple design possibilities and gives a longer service life. And also, concrete is used to build bridges, culverts and sewers, foundation, roads and dams and etc. So, many siya mga properties of concrete no? uh, that we conduct quality tests on and also uh, one of the parameters no? in evaluating the quality of concrete. First is the strength and when you say strength, that includes the compressive strength, the tensile strength, the flexural strength and also the shear strength 
of your concrete. And also, one um, property is the workability of your concrete. No? So, your um, concrete's ability or no, capacity to be handled into the site. Okay. Next property is the elastic property. So, concrete is not perfectly elastic for any range of loading. An appreciable permanent setting taking place for even low loads. The deformation is not proportional to the stress at any stage of loading. The elastic properties of concrete vary with the richness of the mixture and with the intensity of the stress. They also vary with the age of concrete. Next property is the durability. So durability is the property of concrete to withstand the condition for which it has been designed without deterioration over a period of years. Um, lack of durability can be caused by external agents arising from the environment or by internal agents within the concrete. Okay. So next property is its impermeability. So in the case of reinforcement concrete, the penetration of moisture and air will result in the corrosion of steel. So this leads to an increase in the volume of the steel, resulting in cracking and spalling of the concrete. So permeability of concrete is also of importance for liquid retaining and hydraulic structures. Next property is desegregation. So the tendency of separation of coarse aggregate grains from the concrete is called segregation. So kibali magbulag bulag ang imuhang um <coughs> yung mga mga aggregates no sa sa yahang uh, water or sa kanang uh, mixture or sa paste niya no so ang cold ang tawag niya na it is called segregation okay so it increases when the concrete mixture is clean uh, or too wet so it also increases when a uh, rather large and rough textured aggregate is used so pikibali and also one reason of segregation is over mix siya no so usually ma pagka nang sobra na kaayo ang bato kana may mga concrete mixer na na siya specified ng revolutions per minute and also in a specified time pod no so pagka na siya masobraan or magubian kasayahang rate sa kanang iyahang a uh, rotation no, sa mixer drum. Ang night tendency ay na nga ma-overmix siya. And then as a result, mag-segregate ang imuhang mga aggregates and also sa katayang cement paste. Okay? Next property is the bleeding property. So it is a tendency of water to rise to the surface of freshly laid concrete and it is known the bleeding. Okay? Uh, the water rising to the surface carries with it particles of sand and cement which on hardening form of scum layer is properly known as latent. So concrete bleeding can be checked by adopting the following measures. Okay? By it could uh, be mitigated by adding more cement, by using more finely ground cement, or by properly designing the mix and using the minimum quantity of water, and also by using little air in training agents, and also by increasing the finer part of um, fine aggregate. So basically ang kanang bleeding no kanang may mang, may manggawas nga mga um, <clears throat> kanang concrete mixture no diha ba sa form sa formworks niya no or kanang sa kanang bag-o bitaw siyang gibuhusan kanang sa ibabaw nga part no so mao na siya ang cause sa bleeding is kanang mga latencies kuno mga usik-usik good uh, usik-usik not caused by sa kanang construction methodology but ang concrete mismo mura siya ni awas no that is what we call bleeding Next property is fatigue. So, lean uh, concrete when subjected to flexure exhibits fatigue. So, the flexure resisting um, ability of concrete of a given quality is indicated by an endurance limit whose value depends upon the number of repetitions of stress. So, here are the references now that I have used in making this lecture note. So, basically, that's all for our discussion for the general properties of materials or construction materials. No? Uh, so um, if you have a um, question, you may address it during our synchronous class. I'll see you then and that will be that would be all. So you may enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much.